Hello developers. As a UI developer, I want to share something that happens all the time in real world projects, and it causes so much frustration. You create a clean, reusable class for a button. It works great on your page. But then when the project grows, or when other developers start adding their styles, your button suddenly looks completely different. Maybe the color changed, or the padding disappeared, or worse, your styles just don't show up at all. You check your code and it's correct. But the issue is other developers have added their own styles in other files, sometimes using the same class, sometimes using more specific selectors like an ID or combining multiple classes. And if their file loads after yours or their selector has more priority, their style will override yours even if you didn't intend it. This is what we call a cascade conflict and it becomes a nightmare when your project has dozens of files or multiple contributors. In native CSS, the browser decides which style wins based on two things. First, which file was loaded last. And second, which selector is more specific. So even if you carefully designed a button in your base style sheet, if someone else adds a new style later using an ID selector, their style will win because IDs always have higher specificity. Or maybe someone just used the same class dot button in a file that loads last, and now your styles are gone. And when this keeps happening, people start reaching for exclamation important to force their styles, and now the project becomes impossible to manage. But today, we have a powerful and clean solution. It's called CSS Layers. Layers allow you to group your styles into named sections, like base, theme, components, and overrides. Instead of relying on selector strength or file order, you control the order by declaring the layer structure at the top of your CSS. For example, you can say base styles should apply first, then theme styles, then component styles, and finally overrides if needed. Now, it doesn't matter if someone else uses an ID or loads a new file. If their style is inside a lower priority layer, it won't override your work. This brings order to the chaos and gives you total control over which styles apply. In this video, I'll explain these key points. Why CSS styles break when files grow and teams expand. How to apply layers across multiple CSS files. How to structure your base, theme, component, and override logic. And how to visually identify where your styles are coming from. Let's go step by step. We created a simple demo with four CSS files, just like you'd see in a real project. First, the base file sets the default styles for a button, gray background, black text. Then the theme file styles a class called theme button. It makes it blue. Then the component file adds a green background to the button using an ID selector. And finally, the override file styles the button again and turns it red. All of these styles target the same element in different ways. But because we're not using layers, the result is messy and unpredictable. The last file wins, or the strongest selector wins. And your original base style? It's completely ignored. Now let's look at the fixed version, using layers. In this version, we still have the same button structure, but each style is now placed inside a named layer. We declare the order at the top, base first, then theme, then components, and finally overrides. So the base layer handles the default button style, soft gray and black text. The theme layer makes the button blue and styled. The component layer applies green when needed, and the override layer changes it only when it's intentional. Even though the selectors look the same, the browser no longer makes decisions based on order or specificity. It follows the layer structure, exactly how you told it to. This creates clean, predictable styling and eliminates accidental overrides. Now here's something really helpful. In our solution demo, we added small labels to each button using the after pseudo class, so you can see which layer the style came from. Above each button, you'll see a little note that says base layer, theme layer, component layer, or override layer. This helps you identify visually where the style is coming from. So if a style isn't working the way you expect, you can check which layer it's actually in and whether it's being overridden by a higher layer. This makes debugging easier and also helps new developers understand your style structure instantly. So how do you start using layers? Here are the steps. Step one, 
create a main CSS file, like layers.css, where you define your layer order. For example, base, theme, components, overrides. Step two, instead of linking four files directly, use import statements to bring them in and assign them to their correct layers. Step three, inside each individual CSS file, wrap your styles in the matching layer block. For example, use the base layer inside base.css and the component layer inside component.css. Step four, keep your selectors simple. You don't need to use more specific selectors or force overrides anymore. Layers handle the priority for you. Step five, if you're teaching, debugging, or reviewing, you can temporarily add labels using the after pseudo class to show which layer each element belongs to. And that's it. You now have total control over how your styles apply without fighting the browser. If your styles are constantly breaking because of file order or specificity, if you're tired of debugging messy overrides or using exclamation important, CSS layers can solve all of it. You bring structure, you bring clarity, you decide what should win. It's a simple, powerful feature that makes your CSS more professional and more scalable. We've included the full working demo so you can try it out and learn by doing. If you found this helpful, press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more CSS tips. And in the next video, we'll build a full component system using layers from layout to theming the right way. See you in the next video.